Okay, hi there. Welcome to another in our microeconomic video series. Uh, this time we're going to take a, a focus on the causes of price volatility in markets. So that will involve looking at shifts in supply and demand and thinking about elasticity. And the application we're going to take this time is the, the world coffee market. So coffee as a basic product is the 117th most traded product in the world. And it's actually the 948th most complex product, according to Cesar Hidalgo's Product Complexity Index. The raw bean itself is fairly easy to grow. Crucially, of course, where complexity comes is turning these raw materials into, into refined processed products. But coffee is an important product for the world economy. This tree map shows the share of countries that export coffee, the world's biggest exporter. Uh, given total coffee exports of $24 billion in 2016, the world's biggest coffee exporter is Brazil, with a fifth of that. Colombia has 10%. Uh, Germany and Switzerland and Italy figure, as you can see in the chart. Of course, they're, they're typically exporting the roasted, refined products, which have a, have a brand name attached to them. But coffee is certainly important, not just for Brazil and Colombia, but also for countries such as Indonesia and also Ethiopia and Tanzania, as you can see from the chart. It's important to make a distinction between countries which export, if you like, the basic, the raw coffee bean grown in the coffee plantations and the processed coffee products. And they tend to carry, of course, a higher price. They have a higher value added in retail markets. This chart shows the number of cups on average of coffee that people in the UK drink per day in 2017. Uh, the biggest number is somewhere between two to three. Around a third of people drink one cup or less. 2% of people, according to this survey, drink 9 cups or more per day. Staggering number. So let's take a look at some of the underlying causes of price volatility in a market. This is the bit where we can use some basic microeconomic analysis. Well, there are many causes of price volatility, one of which is what we call an adverse supply shock. And I've shown this in the diagram on the left-hand side here. What's happened is that the market supply curve for a product, it could be coffee, it could be cocoa, it could be any sort of primary commodity. The supply curve has shifted to the left because of an adverse supply shock. Perhaps climatic conditions were unfavourable. We could consider the impact of drought or flood or some sort of crop disease uh, taking hold. Political factors might also cause an external shock to supply. And you can see here that if the demand is inelastic, if we draw the demand curve as relatively inelastic, then when the supply curve shifts to the left, there will be a significant increase in the market clearing price. So it's this combination of a supply shock and inelastic demand that can cause an amplified level of price volatility. Here's another example of prices rising when the demand curve shifts out to the right. So an increase in market demand could also cause a price spike from P1 to P2, again, especially if the elasticity of supply of product is low. So in this case, D1 has shifted out to D2, but the supply curve has been drawn as inelastic, and therefore it's hard for the market to supply extra products, causing strong upward pressure on the price level. So there are two fundamental causes of price volatility, uh, outward shifts of supply and demand. And we can see uh, the, the effect of this on, on the market for coffee. Let's take the robusta coffee bean. Coffee is grown in more than 60 countries. It's Actually, if you consider the, the value of trade, it's the second most traded commodity in the world after oil. And nearly 25 million families worldwide depend in some shape or form on coffee to make a living. And you can see here that the price has been relatively volatile, particularly in the early part of the last decade, prices were very low, falling below $20 per tonne, and then they shot up to more than $120 per tonne in 2008. There has been some volatility, volatility since, although one can make a case for saying that prices have traded around $100 to $110 per tonne for a buster coffee. It's interesting just to think about how the price mechanism might work when you get a, a change, a significant change in the price of coffee. So if coffee prices were to increase, for example, as they were doing in 2006 and 2007, 
uh, then you'd expect the rationing function of the price mechanism to bring about a fall in demand. Consumers might cut back on their on their purchases of coffee if prices are higher. On the other hand, the incentive function of the price mechanism suggests that coffee growers will be looking to expand production, perhaps plant increased investment in coffee plantations, which over time would expand the market supply. Equally, when coffee prices go down, when there's a significant dip in the market price of coffee, demand expands, more people can afford to buy coffee-related products, but the incentive function might cause producers, driven by the profit motive, to contract their supply. So in theory, the price mechanism helps to moderate price volatility, but of course we know that's not always the case. So fundamentally, uh, a coffee market is a good example of where both demand and supply are affecting the price. One of the key demand factors is the fact that demand for coffee in emerging nations, fast-growing developing countries, is increasing as per capita incomes rise. Indeed, China has doubled its consumption of coffee in just the last five years. So per capita incomes and income elasticity demand will be a demand side factor. The price of coffee substitutes such as cocoa or tea would also affect global demand for coffee. And we must remember that typically once consumers develop a taste for a product, especially if they have quite strong brand loyalty, then the demand for coffee tends to become more inelastic. Here's a chart showing the share of coffee consumers in China, uh, ranged by age, and you can see that nearly a third of consumers in China who drink coffee are aged between 26 and 30. And the next highest is between 31 to 35. So well over half of coffee consumers in China are essentially aged between 26 and 35. That tends to be the group whose per capita incomes are rising most quickly at the moment. That drives demand higher. What about the supply side? To give you a sense of perspective, uh, world coffee production this year, 2018, is estimated or forecast to be about 160 million bags. So world coffee production is about 3 million bags per week. And that's increased by about 1% over the last year, but it's obviously a significantly high figure. And we mentioned the fact that supply shocks affect the, the market for coffee. So climatic conditions clearly impact on current levels of production. The impact, for example, of, of weather events such as El Nino. The level of coffee stocks, coffee that's been produced, it's held in storage, otherwise known as inventories, that also affects the, the market supply of coffee. And crucially, we also have to think about the, both the number of countries producing coffee. Emerging countries such as Indonesia and Vietnam and Ethiopia have added to coffee supply in recent times. But also the level of investment in and productivity of coffee growing in those countries. These things will all affect the supply side of the market. Stocks are really quite important if you get a question on commodities. So when stocks are falling, then that puts upward pressure on price. And this is an article from a recent uh, news report suggesting that prices seem set to rise in 2018, partly because increasing demand has reduced existing stock levels to a six-year low. Scarcity drives prices higher. And there's also another aspect to consider in this market, and that is the long-term threat to coffee supply. Here's an article from The Guardian, which you might want to chase up and, and just Twitter or Google the headline. There is an emerging consensus amongst experts in the industry that climate change will potentially severely affect coffee crops over the next 10, 20, 30 years and going beyond that. Indeed, by one estimate, by 2100, more than half of the land used to grow coffee will no longer be arable. And keep in mind that coffee provides a livelihood for millions and millions of people in poorer countries. For example, nearly 15 million Ethiopians, that's over a fifth, no, nearly a fifth of the population, depend in part on coffee for their, for their incomes and their standard of living. I strongly recommend, by the way, and again you can Google this, uh, this headline or tweet the headline, Coffee Under Threat. Will it taste worse as the planet warms? A recent piece on the BBC News site about the long-term threat 
to coffee supply. So we've raised uh, a few issues here. The key issues, I suppose, are to understand, first of all, what causes price volatility. And I've emphasised a combination of inelastic demand and supply allied to unexpected supply shocks and changes in market demand. You might then develop your understanding by reading and thinking about the consequences, the impact of price volatility. Some of these consequences are microeconomic in focus. Think about the incomes and the consumption and the livelihoods of farms, farmers and households. Think about profits and jobs and investment in the coffee industry itself. And then, of course, consider the wider macroeconomic consequences of volatility for the value of a country's exports. This has an effect on their current account for the growth of their GDP, for tax revenues flowing to the government and crucially for prospects of countries to continue to grow and develop and bring down levels of extreme poverty. And you might also decide to think about how price volatility can be moderated. Is there a role to play, for example, by a buffer stock scheme, which, which brings stocks into play to try to moderate price changes? How best to encourage innovation in farming? And crucially, thinking longer term ahead, what kinds of investment are needed, particularly in emerging developing countries, to tackle the threats of climate change, to make crops more resilient, and to address, obviously, the issues of growing water scarcity. So the coffee market is a really good example of an industry where price volatility is pertinent. We've looked at some of the causes and thought about some of the consequences and hopefully it's an area, perhaps an industry, if you're a coffee drinker, a coffee lover, that you'll want to explore further in your economics. Okay, thank you for joining in on this one. Take care and uh, catch up soon.